think about uh, names. And so this week, I want to talk about the name of Jesus. And so we're going to do a series. I told her I want to do a series on, I feel like we need to get back to, we don't call on the name of Jesus like we used to. I don't know if you ever in church, they'd be like, call on his name. And we start calling his name and things begin to shift. Things begin to happen. Amen. And so she began to talk about how uh, that, uh, you, you can be named one thing, but it really does not um, reflect where you are going, where you are headed. And so how God will then change your name to represent where he is taking you and what he is doing. And so one of the names I thought we should talk about first is the name of Jesus. Uh, Proverbs 18 and 10, I'm telling you, I believe today is going to bless you if you catch it. Uh, Proverbs 18 and 10 says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. One translation says they are protected. Another translation says the name of the Lord is a strong tower or the name of the Lord is a fortified tower or a strong fortress. And we run into it and we are strengthened. See, when you call on the name of the Lord, he protects you, he comes, he delivers, he sets free, but he also strengthens you to endure what you're about to go to. We tend to forget that there is power and protection in the name of Jesus. Acts 4 and 12 says, salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. See, there is saving power in the name of Jesus, not only for this life, for the next to come. Can anybody say amen? amen. And what he's saying here is, I don't care if your name is, is prominent, if your name, uh, uh, when, when people say your name, you're a celebrity, it does not compare to the name of Jesus. Amen. His name has all power. There's nothing that trumps his name. Marion Webster says, I look at the definition of name, and it says a word or phrase that constitutes the distinctive designation of a person or thing. And so designation is the choosing and naming of someone to be the holder of an official position. See, there's no other name that can hold the position that Jesus' name holds in our life or in the world. When you call on his name, then no one else can answer but him. No one else can handle the weight or the power or the glory of his name but him. Why don't you call on his name right now? Call on Jesus. 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 See, when you call on his name, he shows up. See, I can call William, but there are other Williams that will show up that might not have the characteristics that I'm looking for. But when I call on his name, he shows up. He's the only one that can carry that name. He's the only one that has the power. Another definition of name talks about reputation. The adjective of it is uh, relating to or bearing a name having an established reputation. See, the name of Jesus has an established reputation. There's nothing that needs to be added. There's nothing that needs to be taken away because he has already done everything that he needs to do to prove that he is God all by himself. Can anybody say amen? Amen. Now, today you're going to have to talk to me because I believe that when you open up your mouth, you begin to receive, and then you also are confirming it in your life as well. Amen? Yes, yes. So we serve a God who has an established reputation. Uh, in times of trouble, we have a God who has and can cover us. I'm so glad that I serve a God that can cover me in any situation I find myself in. Amen. We can run to him and be protected and be covered. He knows how to hide us. His name, the name Jesus in Hebrew means Yeshua, which means to deliver and to rescue. And that's what I want to talk about today, that you serve a God that knows how to deliver you, and he knows how to rescue you. So just go ahead and wave your hands right now. If you need a rescue, if you need deliverance, come on, call his name, because he is a deliverer, and he is a God that rescues. When we call on Jesus in a situation, we are literally calling on our deliverer and our rescuer. When you call him, he comes to deliver because that is his name, that is his essence. See, when you call on Jesus, he has to show up. And when he comes, he has to do what his name represents or he is a liar. And we know our God is not a liar, he's not a fake, he is the truth. So when you call on Jesus, he comes to deliver and to rescue. But we always tell you, we've gotten away from calling on his name in church. That's why last Sunday I made you call his name, kept calling his name because there is something that happens when you begin to call on the name of Jesus. I don't know, I don't care what you're going through and how you feel, but something shifts when you begin to call his name because he literally begins to come down and to deliver deliver and to set free. The Bible says he cannot deny himself. So when he comes, deliverance comes with him. 
He is deliverance, and deliverance is him. We're going to go through the word today. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says it like this. It says, call to me and I will answer and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Psalms 91 and 15 says, he shall call upon me and, and, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble and I will deliver him and honor him. There are some key things that are stated in Psalms 91 and 15. First he says, he, uh, see, he must be the first person that we call on when we are in trouble. And you would say, why? It says, because if we call, if we call his name, if we call on him in our situation, if we call on him in what we're going through, he says, he will answer. See, that's the first thing that we, we've got it twisted. We call the wrong people. You can call people and people don't have the answer, but if you call on Jesus, he will always have the answer because his name means to deliver and to rescue. And any person that's going to deliver you already has to have the answer or have already experienced it and worked it out. And he said, I've already went through where you're going to go. I've already went to your end and I'm bringing you back to your beginning and I'm taking you through it. I've already seen where you're going to go. So you You've got to learn to call on me because when you do, I will answer. I know the way that you're going to go. I know the steps that you're going to take. I know the trap that the enemy has set, and I know how to deliver and bring you out. So you've got to learn to call on me. He says, so if we call, he says, I will answer. And then he says, not only will I answer, but I will be with you in times of trouble. See, people get flaky when you get into trouble. When things are good, they're with you. But when things get bad, they will leave quick, fast, and in a hurry. But he's, he's the kind of God, he's like, trouble is nothing to me. Because if he has enough power to hold the moon in his place, if he has enough power to hold the stars in place, if he has enough power to keep the sun where it needs to be, if he has enough power to keep the blood circulating through your body, he has enough power to deal with trouble. Trouble doesn't mean anything to him. Our trouble is not his kind of trouble. But he said, if you call me, he says, I will answer. He said, not only will I answer, but I will be with you. That means he will step into your situation. Right there, you ought to lift your hands and thank God. That if you call on him, he said, look, I'm not going to step into that. He said, I will get all up in it because I, I, trouble doesn't affect me. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't stop. Sickness doesn't stop me. Sickness doesn't scare me. Financial issues don't stop me. People don't stop. He said, I am God. He says, if you call me, I will answer, and I will be with you in trouble. He said, not only will I be with you in trouble, he said, but I will deliver you. And I looked up that word deliver, and it means lifting up out of a pit or dragging up out of the midst of anything that surrounds a man, putting him in harm. Aren't you glad that he said, listen, I will not only step into your situation, but I will lift you up out of it. You ought to be glad that he will lift you up out of situations. There are some situations you created. There are some things that you should really have paid the price for, but when you call on his name, because he loves you and his name means deliverance and rest. He said, I will lift you up out of the mess you got your own self in. Thank you. He said, not only will I lift you up, but I will put you in a place of safety. Some of you, you ought to thank God that in this season, he's taking you, he's pulling you out of some stuff that you were wrapped up and tangled up in. He said, look, I'm going to put you in a place of safety. Not only that, he says, but but I will also honor you. And see, that honor means to glorify. He said, I will glorify you. But not only that, he said, I will show the people that are against you that you are my prize. That's what that definition of honor means. He says, I know that you're going through some things. And I know that people may not value you the way that you feel they should. He said, but I will be with you. And I will put my glory and my honor on you. And I will show them that you are my prize. You ought to lift your hand and say, God, I am your prize. That means that he will decorate you with his blessing and with his goodness and with his protection and with his strength to let the people know that you are mine. Acts 2 and 21 says, and he shall come and, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's why you've got to call on his name. Because when he comes, he says, not only will I save you, uh, uh, your soul, but I will save you from what you are going through. I will deliver you. I will bring you out. Isaiah 65 and 24 says that it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear right there. You ought to be excited to know that even before you can get it out, he already knows what you need. That means before you can even get the SOS out, he's already answered you. He's already heard you and he's already moved. 
It ain't nothing like having a, a, a dessert or something you want and you asking for it, but it's already showed up. Can you imagine? Who, I mean, you, you ever, you ever, for some of us that are married, you ever been married and you they got a taste for something and then your spouse show up with it and you're like, oh my God, God, I, I, I was just thinking about it. God's like, I'm better than that. He's like, before you can ever get it out of your mouth, what you need, before you can even get the H E L and then you go for help, before you can even get to the end of the word, he's already an answer. He's already showed up. Right there, you want to thank him. He said, before you can even get the words out, I already worked it out. Mm -hmm. So there ain't nothing that takes God by surprise. Yeah. I'm so glad I serve a God. There's nothing that takes him by surprise. Yeah. Yeah. He knows the way that I take. That's why you got to be close to him. That's why you've got to call his name. Romans 10, 12 and 13 says it like this. It says, for there is no difference between the Jews and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich. And to all that call upon him. Right there when I read it, I got so excited. See, when you call upon him, it said he is rich. That means that he has everything that you need when you call. Amen. Are y'all in the building this morning? Yeah, I'm, I'm right here. <coughs> he said, our God is rich. Yes. Not just in money, but when you need peace. When yes. you call on him, he yes. shows up with yes. more than what yes. you need. That means when you need love, he comes and shows up with what you need. When you need uh, understanding, he shows up with what you need. When you need wisdom, he shows up with what you need. When you need healing, he shows up with what you need. When you need a friend, he shows up with what you need. When you need somebody to fight for you, he shows up with what you need. He says he is rich. That means there's, there's no lack in him. Whatever you need, he already got it stored up. It's already waiting for you. He's waiting for some people that will call his name. Yes, yes. That's why we found ourselves in the way that we are, because we called everybody else before we call him. But he says, when you call on me, he said, he is rich. He doesn't matter if you Jew, if you Greek, whatever you are. He said, I'm rich in power and I can take care of you. And he says, so whatsoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, or whosoever uh, shall call upon his name, shall be saved. Jeremiah, this is where I want to get to. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says it like this in the Amplified. It says, call to me, and I will answer and tell you, and even show you great and mighty things which ye, uh, things which have been confined and hidden, which you do not know and understand and cannot distinguish. I'm going to read that again because, see, when you call on his name, he brings what you need. Jeremiah 33, it says, again, call to me and I will answer you and tell you and even show you great and mighty things, things which have been confined and hidden, which you do not know and understand and cannot distinguish. He just said amen, right? There is so much he can show us in times of trouble. He shows us great and mighty things when we are pressed and when we are in trouble. This is what he said, when you call on me and you call me to deliver and to set you free, I not only show up, but I will show you things in the midst of what you are going through because you called on me. I will show you things that have been hidden. I will show you things that you have not understood so that I can bless you and get you out. So when, so there is so much he can show us. He does He does for us what no other person or power can do. When uh, he comes, he is also light. That's what the word of God says, that he's a God of light, right? Yes. Yes. So when he shows up, when we call on the name of Jesus and he comes to deliver us and he comes to set us free, he also comes and brings light. The Bible says he is a light unto our pathway, right? So see, he comes to show us what has been confined, what has been hidden. He comes when he shows up, he shows us the traps. He also shows us a way of escape. That's what the word of God says, that he will give us a way of escape in situations. But the only way you will have a way of escape is if light shows up. So in the midst of your darkness, he comes to be light, yeah. to show you the way out. Right there, you ought to thank God. Yeah. I'm trying to prophesy to you this morning that when you call on Jesus, yeah. he comes to deliver you, yeah. but he's going to show you the way out. See, one time I remember I began to call on God and he said, no, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not going to take you out of this thing. I'm going to lead you out of this thing. He said, because if I take you up out of it, 
if you won't understand what it went through, why you got in this process, and you will get back in it. He said, but if I show you how to get out, and you have to work to get out, and trust me, you won't go back to where you were. So now I pray, I've matured in my prayer, and said, God, don't take me out, bring me out. Show me how to get out of this thing. Because if you, if he takes you out of it right away, there is no anointing. There's nothing that you get from it. But if he leads you through it and you conquer that thing, now you have an anointing to stand up to it in somebody else's life and say, no, you got to go because I've already experienced you. You have no power. He has delivered me. He has set me free. That's how you know a mature Christian. They don't just say, God, take me out. No, God, take me through it. Because if you show up in my trouble and you said you're going to deliver me, then I'm not afraid of what I've got to go through because you're with me. So he shows us what the enemy has been trying to keep hidden and trying to keep confined. He comes to bring light. And you might say, what are some of the things that, that he has been trying, that the enemy has been trying to keep hidden and, 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 and keep confined uh, from us? And I'm glad you asked that question. Well, some of the things that he will show you is that you have a God that will show up. You have power for Goliath. You have power to sustain you in fiery furnaces. See, the enemy will try to hide, hide and conceal the power and the presence of God in your life when he puts you through things. So he'll put so much darkness around you that you lose sight, that you serve a God that has power to help you fight Goliath. That he, he will try to hide from you that you have a, a God that will step in the fiery furnace with you in the midst of what you are going through. He tries to hide or conceal that God knows how to multiply your fish and your crackers when it's low, when you need something to eat, when your money is. He knows how to, how to multiply it. So the enemy in your times of distress will try to hide the fact that God has all power and that he knows how to multiply. Anybody ever experienced God's multiplication in your life when you didn't know how ends were going to meet, when you didn't know where things were going to come from? He multiplied. He will try to conceal that he has a that there is a God that knows how to help you walk on water like Peter. He will he will conceal that God knows how to sustain you in a drought. Some of us you don't recognize we are in a drought, but God has still kept you. Has anybody here went out without eating? Has anybody went without in this? This is the season of drought. But it doesn't have to be a drought in my house. Why? Because I know how to call on the name of Jesus. And when I call on him, he knows how to deliver me and keep me in seasons of drought. See, he tries to conceal that God has the power to keep you alive in the midst of plagues. When you look at the Bible and the children of Israel, when they when they were going through, when the others, the, the Egyptians were going through, he kept them safe from all the plague. He knows how to keep you safe. See, you got to understand that the enemy will try to conceal or, or hide from you that you have power to speak to your oppressor. You have power to speak to Pharaoh and say, you got to let me go. you got to loose me and let me go. Come on, begin to talk to the enemy now. If you call on the name of, say, i got the name of Jesus fighting for me. you got to let me go. you got to let my mind go. you got to let my body go. you got to let my finances go. Go. You got to let my relationship go. You got to let my ministry go. You got to let my children go. You got to let my family go. Come on, are we in this place or not? He 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 wants. He tries to conceal the fact that you have victory in every situation. You have victory. You have power. You have a God who can do and be anything. He's an ever-present help in a time of trouble. That's why you've got to know what the name of Jesus means. He, he said, I am your deliverer. I am your rescuer. Psalms 25 and 14 says, the secrets of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. See, when you call on his name, it says, the secrets of the Lord are with them that fear him, not those that are scared of him. That's not what that fear is talking about. But it's those that have a reverence for him. It's those that have an understanding that he is God and that he has all power. And he said, when you can recognize who I am in your life, I will show you my covenant. I will show you my goodness. I will show you my blessing. I will show you my hand. I will show you my faithfulness. I will show you my love. I will show you my goodness. I will show you that I can fight for you like nobody else can fight for you. I will show you that I'm better than a surgeon. I can touch you with one finger and heal everything that a surgery could have done. He said, I can do it. He says, the secret of the Lord is with them. He will show you things that other people can't see when you begin to call his name. Isaiah 45 and 3 says, 
and I will give them treasures of darkness. Yes. Uh, right there, you ought to be excited. Yes. He says, and I will give them. He's yes. talking about you. Yes. I will give you treasures of darkness yes. and hidden riches yes. of secrets. Yes. See, there are things that the enemy wants to hide from you. God says, when you call on my name, I bring light. I illuminate. I show you the things that have been hid in the dark. I show you things that you've been trying to get, but you couldn't get. But now that you're calling on my name, I will give you access to get it because I'm going to give you power and I'm going to light the way that you're able to get it. So he says, I will give you treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, will call uh, I... The Lord may us know that I, the Lord, which call thee by name, am the Lord God of Israel. See, there are some things God wants to do in your life just to let you know I'm Lord. Come on now. Come on. Like, I want to show you that I'm with you. Thank you, Jesus. There are some things you're trying to figure out. You just got to invite him into your situation. Yes, yes. Yes. And when you invite him in, he will show you things that you couldn't see before. Have you ever been through something and you got so distraught that you couldn't think, you didn't turn to God, but then when you begin to turn to him, it's like he put everything back to, and you're like, what? why was I stressed about that? Why did I Why did I go? He was like, because you didn't call on me. If you had called on me in the beginning, you would have already been walking where you are because you wouldn't have been stressing. You wasted time. God is not a God that wastes time. He's like, if you call me, I'm going to show up and we're going to get it done. But if you wait and you don't call me, then you gonna, we're going to keep going in the circle. He shows you the hidden treasures in you, what is to be gained from this attack. Thank you. See, that's why I've learned in, in seasons of attack, I know one thing for sure, I've got to call on him. That's it. Thank you, Lord. Because he will show me, Randy, no, you've got to go through this because I'm about to show you what you're about to gain from this. See, when you don't call on him, you get all friends, I'm going to lose this, I'm going to lose this, this is going to happen. He's like, no, no, no. If you call on me, I've, my name means deliverance. My name means rescue. So when you call on me, I've got to do what my name says. I've got to live up to my name. I can't do anything outside my name. So when you call on me, I've got to show up. When you call on me, I've got to deliver you. When you call on me, I've got to rescue you. When you call on me, I've got to give you a way of escape. He said, but you don't call on me. It's like having a car sitting in your driveway and you, you look at it and say it's beautiful, but you never put the key in and drive it. It's like having the gift of tongues and not using it. The Bible says that there's power in our tongues. There's power. There's things. There's, that's a language between heaven and earth. And when you begin to speak in tongues, you're speaking the language of heaven and your spirit is able to receive. And there's a communication going back and forth. And so when you don't use it, you're not getting that connection. But we get so wrapped up in the attack that we forget that there's something that we must gain from it. We lose the understanding of God and his saving power or his plan and purpose for our life. That's why it says we can't distinguish truth from a lie. We can't, when we get into attacks and we don't call on him and he says we can't distinguish things, we can't distinguish that this is a setup for God's promotion over our lives. See, God doesn't take you through anything in life for you not to get something from it. That's just not the kind of God that we serve. Everything that he takes you through, it is purposefully thought out. And there is something that he wants you to gain. There is something that he wants you to get. There's something he wants to put in your hands for what you go through. He never allows you to go through anything and he does not pay you off. He does, he's not that kind of God that just puts you through something for you not to get something. There's something he wants you to learn and master that you will use for the next place that he's about to take you to. There's something that he wants to put in your hands that we've got to trust him. That's why the Bible says, if God be for me, who can be against me? Because there's something he wants to show you. That, that there's nothing that can stand against a child of God or a person who knows how to call his name. Now, I'm not a name dropper, and I could drop names, but the only name I need to drop in my life is Jesus. Because that's the only name that's going to give me access to what I need. Yes, yes, yes. You can name drop people names all day long, and they'll still talk about you. And they have the keys to open doors for you, and they won't open the door. You call in their name, but I got a God who can break down the door. He ain't even got to open it. He can speak one word, and every door will fall. You got to learn how to name drop the name. I done bought cars saying the name of Jesus. Well, I done got discounts I didn't even expect because I knew how to drop the right name. 
His name knows how to bring the stock market down to your level. His name, his name knows how to bring your credit up. His name knows how to speak to bankers that don't like you and don't want to give you an opportunity. His name knows how to speak to employers that they have to hire you when you don't have the credentials. See, you gotta know which name to drop to get you into what you need. We can't distinguish God is using the situations and the tests to bring blessing and wisdom and anointing into our life. One of the things I love about it, God will take you through things and he'll give you the spoils of the enemy. See, see, I don't mind going through things because I know that if there's somebody that's not for me and they have amassed, the Bible says he will allow the wicked to amass great riches, riches that he will then give over to the, the, the people of God, the, the righteous of God. So I don't mind going up against Goliaths that have stored great treasures because if God is telling me that, that you're going to go down, then that means that what you got, he's got to release to me because you're the you're my giant. I've got to fight. That's why you are you are not to be afraid to go against people that are bigger than you when God is with you because what they have amassed and they're not living right, God will turn that thing around and switch it and give it to you. See, God knows how to give you spoils of war when you go through the war. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We can't distinguish who to call on. If we call on man, we get man's answers, man's solutions, and man's limited wisdom. But when we call on Jesus, we get results. You gotta understand when you call, I, I love to talk to my mother, but I've learned now that I called Jesus first and called mama second. Come on. Amen. <laughs> I love my mama. Yes. But I know who has all yes. power. Yes. Amen. I know who has power. Now she could pray up something. Now when we really in the battle, we call and say, hey, we need you to go in the closet and pray. Right. She talking Chinese or some everything else, but she was gone. <laughs> But I know her and God can get it done. Right. But you, but we've got to call on Him yes. because when He shows up, He, like I said, He gives, He gets the results. When He shows up, His wisdom shows up. His His deliverance, His power. When He shows up, you get all of heaven. See that that's something that you got to understand. When you call on His name and He has to show up, all of heaven comes with Him, yes. and all that heaven has is now available to you. Anybody getting anything? Yes. Amen. He says, my name, when you call it, means rescue or deliverer. When you call me, you get delivered. But see, there's, there, there, there's also something you have to do. You can't just call him and expect that he's going to do everything. But when you call him, you've got to be obedient. And when you call him, you've got to be willing to do whatever he says to do. Because it may look crazy to others, but he knows what he's doing. Amen. I remember when I was getting ready to get married and I didn't have all the money that I needed, you know, and I had a Mercedes at the time and I was like, you know what? I don't want to, this is my first car, like, I don't want to trade, I don't want to, I had to sell it because I need to get money. You know, I'm like, God, I'm out of college, I got this car, I, I got to sell it. I remember I took it and, and sold it and didn't get as much money as I wanted for it. And I was like, God, you got to do something. You know, I, I'm getting, I, I want a house. I got to take care of this woman. I, you know, all this stuff. And I remember I was at a service one time. And I don't know if I ever told y'all this, but I was at a service. I was supposed to go out of town to meet her. And, and at the time, you know, I had, I had another car. No, my dad had a car. I think I sold the car. And my dad, we got into some kind of argument. He was like, well, you ain't taking my car to go out of town. I'm like, oh, you know, so I was upset. And, and then uh, I went to this church service. I'll never forget she was in church. We were in church, and, the, and this, the, 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 the minister was speaking, and she was like, call on the name of Jesus. Call on him. Call on him. And I began to call on his name, but I began to tell him what I needed. I was calling his name and saying, God, I need this. God, I need that. And I remember the Lord said, if you praise me, he said, I will give you a house. He said, if you praise me, I will take care of your wedding. I will never do that. And I began to dance and shout. The next thing I knew, I had rolled across the floor. My suit came off. When I came through, I was underneath a whole bunch of bleachers. I didn't know where I was. Glasses were somewhere else. My shoes were somewhere else. But let me tell you that I got the house. And when I tell you my, my wedding was paid for, everything that we needed. There were people that were, that, the, the company that did the cake. When, and at one point in time, the lady told my wife, she said, you know, I can't charge you for this cake. Everything that we needed, did God not take care of it? Because I called his name, and he told me to praise him. I didn't know how that praise was going to turn out. But all I knew was that he said, praise him. 
I was going to praise him. And when I praised him, he delivered me. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't mean that when you call on him and he delivers you, everything turns out always the way that you want it. There were times in the same house that he gave me that they said I could not afford, but we called on his name and he made it where we could afford it. There was almost a time we were going to lose that house trying to take over another church. God kept us in that house. I never lost it. 17 years I stayed in the house. They said I could not afford. Sold the house and built something better. See, when you call on Jesus, he will take care of you. We didn't face infertility. We didn't face cancer. She buried two parents. But all through it, we kept calling on his name, and he has walked us through it. So when we faced people with infertility, we were able to lay hands on 10 different couples who the doctor said couldn't have children. They all had children. We were able to lay hands on people who were going to lose their houses. They were still in their houses. See, what you go through is not always for you, but he's teaching you how to trust him and how to call his name. Because, see, there's an anointing you get from that that you can look at somebody else and say, now, I call that thing out in the name of Jesus, and I speak over your life. I know there were people laughing at me because I, I got God done praising God. They're like, man, you was everywhere. Your glasses went, your shoes was here, your, your, your jacket was there. But you don't understand, I called on his name and he showed up. And in that instant, he delivered me. And I'm still reaping the benefits of calling his name. So you got to be so obedient. If God said, get up and run around this church ten times, you get up and run because you don't know what it's doing for you or for your family. Or for your children or grandchildren to come. But he says, you've got to get back to calling my name. You've got to get back to calling on me. Because when you call, I show up. I'm so glad he's not a God that said, when you call, he say, hold on, I'll be there in 10 minutes. Or I'll be there next week. Or he see your call and he, he let it go to voicemail. But I'm so glad that when I call him, he stops whatever he's doing. He said, oh, no, that's my son. Oh, no, that's, that's my daughter. I got to show up. But the one thing is when you call him, you got to believe that he's going to do it. Yes. See, I know if I ask my dad, Greg, that I need some juice, I have enough faith that and he's he not going to give me a gallon of juice. He's going to get four or five. Yeah. He's going to go down and say, I ain't know which one to get, so I just got four or five. Yeah. I'm, Daddy, I just needed one. He said, well, just take it. That's what I got. If I say, Daddy, I need a pair of shoes, he comes with two or three. He's always like, now, if my earthly father, the word says, knows how to give good gifts, how much more your heavenly father? Right there, you ought to lift your hand to know that God is going to take care of you. He will do exceedingly abundant above all that you can ever ask of faith according to the power that works in us or according to the faith that works in you is what he's going to do. Some of you, it's time to start calling on his name. Some of you, it's time to start getting the faith back because he can only do what you allow him to do. No more, no less. You think little, you're going to get little. You think big, you get big. He said, now, if you can think, he loves big thinkers because if you can think big, he said, okay, now your big thinking ain't good enough. So now I've got to outdo that. I've got to show you that I'm really God because if you can think it, it's not good enough for him. That's why I be thinking about all kinds of stuff big. And I'm like, well, God, if, 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 if my thinking doesn't compare to your thinking, and you said my big thinking is little, I found the trick that I'm going to think bigger than what I need. I'm going to think the biggest I can think of because you got to outdo that or you ain't God. That's why he said, I will show you hidden treasures. It, it, he shows us all through the way hidden treasures. He, one of the treasures is if you call on his name. He said, I will show up. I will deliver you. There are some things we're dealing with that we should not have to deal with if we only called on his name. If we called on his name. He said, I will show up. So I want you to get on our feet. We're done. Anybody receive anything?